However, if we want to start today and get engineering nanotech nanobots to really run around like the sci-fi movies show us, the highest feasibility are basically for the thermodynamic approaches, including Goychuk. Goychuk I didn't give you the reference for, but it's in my study. It's Physical Review Letters, Volume 81, 1998. And he essentially describes quantum Brownian rectifiers. <clears throat> and he does so in such precise terms, in terms of the predicted curves and demonstrations, that whereas before we talked about having a voltage necessary, you don't even need that. He proves that all you need is the quantum uh, stochastic um, dissipation. And um, so that's the summary. And the recommendations are that we should be pursuing metal-to-metal -metal nanodiodes, and they probably hold the key to using simple transducers that can achieve watts per square meter for delivery. Many uh, technologies, a couple I pointed to, show you how to apply these in two-dimensional sheets. And of course, then you can stack the sheets. And they're temperature independent, which is a fascinating part. And they work 24 hours a day as well. <laughs> That's another very important part of all of this. Uh, ratchet, ratchet-like asymmetries, as we saw, were more um, related to the thermodynamic approach. But as Goychuk points out, if you get the tight binding crystal lattices, uh, that is perhaps the secret to um, applying stochastic resonance and achieving rectification. In other words, you get current flow just by applying the, the correct quantum mechanics on, on a randomized uh, approach. And the other word for um, applying it to the photocarno engine is quantum coherence, where you just look for a phase difference. And, uh, and that certainly is interesting as well. And the last one is the electromagnetic field effects, which are encouraging for propulsion and transport. So, uh, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, feel free.